Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the R case stumbling bear. And I am here to go over the seven finalists for the second year of the self-published science fiction contest. The seven finalists were just announced to us and the contestants on May 1st. Today's still May 1st. I figured I'd come and I'd film this video real fast and I know it will take me a couple days to get up, but I wanted to let you guys know who are in my community. So first off, I do have to shout out that Melody by David Hoffer is one of the seven finalists and this was one of the books that my team got in the very first round and was one of our quarter finalists and we sent it off to be a semi-finalist and the other groups liked it enough that it's now a finalist so congratulations to David Hoffer I'm very excited that's also one book that I don't have to read at this point of time because I've already read it and I also have a review for this so if you want to hear more about Melody I'm gonna leave that link down below and please go check it out now for the other six I've seen other reviews pop up for this but I actually haven't been reading my fellow contestants reviews unless it's for books that I have read and that's just because I didn't want to get hyped for a book and then it didn't get passed on to me, meaning I wouldn't get to read it as soon. So I've been kind of waiting. So I'm going to go over the synopsis of these books and just kind of give you my first impressions. All right, so first we're going to look at Percival Ghent and the Conspiracy of Days by Drew Melbourne. Now, looking at this, I'm getting just from the cover, I'm getting the vibe of like Groundhog Day, a repeating time, or some sort of time travel. But let's read the synopsis. The year is 20,018. The famed magician Illuminary is dead, and his greatest illusion has died with him. Dark forces now seek the engine of Armageddon, the ancient sentient doomsday weapon that Illuminari hid amongst the stars. Enter Percival Gint, accountant, a part-time hero whose quest to find the engine before it falls into the wrong hands may be our universe's last best hope for survival. It is a quest that will take him from the highest reaches of power to the lowest pits of despair and through every manner of horror and absurdity between. But beware, this accountant has a secret, a secret that may damn us all. So, okay, maybe not time travel from what we're talking about here. Uh, it, it seems like it's going to be a humorous sci-fi, which I do enjoy. Can't wait to see how this one's going to go. And let's look to the next one. The next one is Night Music by Tobias Cabrel. And this cover is not really giving me much of a clue. It, you know, looks like it's taken of a planet from outer space. I am not certain. So to the synopsis, the colonization of Mars has begun. Following a rapid expansion of the manned space program due to the discovery of a potentially catastrophic Earth crossing comet, Zubrin Base has been established on the Red Planet to oversee the capture of the rogue object. During final preparations for a second expedition, however, contact has been lost with the outpost. Pilot Seth Boaz finds himself retasked for a rescue mission, one which will force him to confront his own past as well as otherworldly forces with profound implications for humanity's future. Okay, I'm still not really sure what I'm going to be expecting. Maybe more of a near future? Next we have Hammer and Crucible by Cameron Cooper. And just saying from this cover, I love it. Definitely is giving me kind of space opera vibes or a classic sci-fi, which I really enjoy. And to the synopsis, the interstellar array which links worlds together wakes to find it has enemies. The fourth Karanad Empire stretches across hundreds of settled worlds in stellar cities and thousands of light years. The Empire's people and data are linked by a space folding gates array controlled by the Emperor and his cohorts. When the array evolves into a sentient entity, it recognizes the Emperor as its foe. Danny Andella, once known as the Imperial Hammer, withdrew from the Imperial Rangers decades ago. Her reputation in tatters, 
She lives on her family's star barge, waiting to die of a rare old age. She would be the array's perfect weapon against the Emperor, except she no longer gives a damn about anything. Then Danny learns that the military disaster, which essentially ended her life, might possibly have been arranged by the Emperor himself. Ooh. So this is like a space opera like revenge story, loving like an AI coming to sentience. Mm, I'm very, very excited for this one. I mean, I already had it marked as one to read from when I was first perusing everything, but very, very excited for this one. Next, we have Aestis, book one, The City by S.Z. Atwell. And I have heard that this book is a chunker at 700 pages. To be completely transparent, I had started reading people's reviews, and so I know that this people that I trust have really liked this. So I'm, it was already one that I was really interested in reading. And I know it's kind of like a dystopian world after climate. And this does kind of give you those vibes here. When Josie was 10, the creatures of the above ground took her brother and left her for dead with horrible scars. Now, years later, she's a successful solar engineer working to keep her underground city's power running, but she's never really recovered. After she saves dozens of people during a second attack, she is offered a top secret assignment as a field engineer with patrol, but fear prevents her from taking it until patrol finds bones near where her brother disappeared. She signs on and finds herself catapulted into a world that is far more dangerous and requires far more of her than she ever imagined. The creatures and the burning heat above ground are not the only threats facing the city and what she learns during her assignment could cost her her life. One of the greatest threats to the city may in fact lie within. With thousands of lives at stake, can she act in time? Definitely really excited about this one. I, I kind of feel like this is going to be my Memorial Day read, just to give me lots of time to focus on it. Again, because it's a chunker. So next we have Those Left Behind by N.C. Grimgior. I know I butchered that last name. Classic space opera cover here. Definitely love those vibes. And so for the synopsis, time is running out for the people of New Palace. Nobody knows that better than Alvera Renata, a tenacious captain determined to scout past the stars with nothing but a handpicked crew and the promise she made to find a new home for humanity. But between navigating the dangers of dark space and playing first contact politics with a galactic civilization already on the brink of war, Alvera soon realizes keeping her word might not be as easy as she thought. Her only hope may be the secrets of the ancient alien way stations scattered across the galaxy. The mysterious technology could be the key to humanity's survival or bring the unwanted attention of the long forgotten beings who built them. But remaining united in the face of annihilation is a lot to ask from a crew already splintering under the weight of their differences. A jaded pilot wrestling with his family's bloodstained legacy looks for a place he can start over. A young translator, desperate to leave her mark on the galaxy, searches for meaning out in its lawless frontier. And Alvera reckons with the aftermath of betrayal as she fights for a way to save them all. As they break apart to forge their own paths, Alvera and her crew all face the same question. What are they willing to sacrifice to save those left behind? Ooh, so not just space opera, but space opera that it's going to have tragedy I wonder if this one is going to make me cry. And not intended, but The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August is the seventh finalist that we're going to look at today. This has a really nice cover. I like it. It kind of gives me that literary sci-fi cover feel, which isn't a bad thing at all. It, it's a classic cover. It, it makes me interested to pick it up. So for the synopsis, a dying universe. When the home worlds finally achieved the technology to venture out into the stars, they found a graveyard of dead civilizations, a sea of lifeless gray planets and the ruins. What befell them is unknown. All home knows is that they are the last civilization left in the universe. And whatever came for the others will come for them next. A search for answers. 
Scout is an archivist tasked with scouring the dead worlds of the cosmos for their last gifts. Interesting technology, cultural rituals, anything left behind that might be useful to the home worlds and their survival. During an excavation on a lifeless planet, Scout unearths something unbelievable, a surviving message from an alien who witnessed the world-ending entity thousands of years ago, a past unraveled. Lyrena was once a friend, a soulmate, and a respected leader of her people, the Stelhari. At the end of her world, she was the last one left. She survived to give one last message, one final hope to the future, instructions on how to save the universe. An adventure at the end of a trillion lifetimes. With the fate of everything at stake, Scout must overcome the dangers of the Stalhari's ruined civilization while following Lyrena's leads to collect its artifacts. If Scout can't deliver these groundbreaking discoveries back to the archivists, home might not only be the last civilization to exist, but the last to finally fall. So another space opera. Yeah, I know that we've had so many different types of science fiction in this contest. I'm kind of surprised that we have so many space opera represented here at the finalists. Now, space opera is my favorite subgenre, so I'm not really complaining, but it is kind of interesting. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first or last, but I am excited. I have six books to read. Mm, I forgot to see when my end date was. Okay, so for this last season, for reading the seven finalists, the judges have between May 1st and July 4th because we need I mean, all, all the team scores will be used for this one and they need time to get all the scores calculated so the winner can be announced on the 15th of July so I have until from now until July 4th to finish my reading and get my scores entered two months to read six books can I do it? In theory, yes. <laughs> Will I do it? I'm so hoping so. But I am very excited for this next round. I have had so much fun doing this. So from the six books that I talked about, or you know, you can even include the seventh, which I've already read, which books look the most interesting to you? Are there any that you're wanting me to prioritize reading because you want to know how the book is sooner rather than later? I'd love to know your comments down below. Thank you and have a great day.